Hey watercolor wizards, Hajar here. Today we'll be painting a popular holiday subject, a festive and gorgeous red cardinal in gouache using the Grisaille technique. As usual, video notes, project sketches, art blogs, deconstructed painting posts, and more rewards are available for my patrons on Patreon. If you've drawn a lot of birds, you can sort of start to make them up. So I can pull a loose cardinal out of my brush, which I might do another time as a demo, but for the sake of making a color reference available on my Patreon page, along with my pencil sketch, I used a free reference from Pixabay from my handsome feathered friend here. To get that verisimilitude, it's actually always good to look at some photo references even if you're going to put them away and make up your own piece in the end. I'm using cold press 140 pound arches or arch watercolor paper, a size 2 round from silver brush black velvet, and a nylon filbert brush. They've been chopped down for fitting into travel kits in the past. I am using gouache today in the guise of Creatacolor Aqua Bricks which are marketed as usable as gouache and the Aqua Bricks make it so I can use gouache in a convenient light fast pan form. I'm starting off with a gray grisaille, which is an underpainting of just the values from light to dark that I've explained in various other videos. You don't have to do a grisaille for simple paintings or even intermediate ones, and I don't myself for everything. But it does divide up value and color into separate layers, so if you're looking to make your value building more robust and your pieces more realistic, then grisaille's got your back. The grisaille should be of mid value 5 darkness or darker. It's no good at boosting your values if you do it lighter than that. Some artists do a grisaille just as a guide for later layers and do cover it up completely with opaque colors whether they're working in oil, acrylic, or gouache, but I try not to as it feels wasteful of my rendering during the grisaille stage. Though sometimes if the grisaille is not dark enough, it does happen. In fact, it'll happen partially this time as I didn't quite make the grisaille dark enough in the darkest areas. If I had done watercolor over this grisaille cardinal rather than gouache, then it would have been fine everywhere as far as darkness of value, but it ended up being a bit too light for gouache overpainting. If you're using an opaque medium like gouache, the most useful grisaille will have your darkest darks in there too, but it can stop at mid-value darks for a transparent medium like watercolor which will add some values to your subject as you layer in glazes. So right now my cardinal looks like he's starring in a pre-technicolor movie on the silver screen. He's all black and white. And I'm using wet on dry for the beak and eye area, and wet on wet for blendy effects everywhere else. I like the fuzzy bleeds for feather implication. You can make the feathers more tight and clearly rendered, but I like the soft focus look it gives here. And as I've mentioned in other videos, if you do a value underpainting, it doesn't have to be a gray grisaille. It can be a green verdai or brown brunei or any other shadow color that suits your piece. I could have used a dark green here, for example, since it's a complement to the red feathers that'll come later and would make a good shadow layer. I could have also used a dark sepia if I wanted a less visible monochromatic shadow under the red top layer. And when I get to the red finally, it's like a pop of holiday magic, and then we're not in Kansas anymore. I apply the gouache in a medium or medium thick consistency. Not super thick though, I want it to move and flow a bit and blend, and not super thin either in a watercolor type glaze. No point in that when I'm using gouache and aiming for an opaque end result. If you only own gouache, you can thin it down for some pieces to imitate transparent watercolor, but if you own both watercolor and gouache like I do, you're better off using watercolor transparently and using gouache opaquely because they both look best in those respective forms. And I put in my color wet on dry, gouache sits on the surface 
surface more, while transparent watercolor stains and sinks in more. So gouache doesn't like thin glazes, while watercolor loves them. I vary the color from red to a red orange and eventually a shadow mix of red and gray in places where I see the grisaille is going to get covered up and need some value boosting. I also used a damp brush to displace some of the red gouache and give me some feathery texture in the head area as the paint is lifted or shifted aside by the water. Lifting gouache is a very effective way to get natural looking highlights and work from dark to light on a dark layer. You don't always have to bring in white for all your lights, though I will do that sparingly in other places as it's typical on a gouache piece to end up using white for tints somewhere. The eye and ear beak area look very faded after putting in the red and it's because I didn't gauge the grisaille accurately for that little blackish area around his eye. So I go in and darken it up. For the actual beak itself, it was the right grisaille value, so I just go in with the orange and yellow gouache colors again wet on dry and softening edges together. Because the yellow alone is not light enough, I add in a few dabs of white on the beak that I blend into a yellow-white tint right on the wet surface. Gouache color edges can be easily blended while wet with a fresh paint or after they have dried with a damp, clean brush. And I strive to bring something unique and artistic to a piece even if it's based on a photo. Don't just copy pixel for pixel a dead lens's view of the world. I know I liked doing stuff hyper real and graphite when I was younger just to show other kids in high school that I could but as I got past college and beyond I realized once you have your art chops you don't have to just ham-fistedly be replacing a camera. Part of this will happen automatically as you or I, alive emotional beings, translate and communicate what we uniquely perceive onto paper. Each of us will have a singular vision or artistic gaze different from what anybody else sees. And add to that choosing to work in traditional media, watercolor, gouache, or ink like I do, and you'll find that traditional mediums are unpredictably flighty and marvelously organic. And so your piece really gets a mood in its own language of tangible text texture and blends and bleeds. So I have my visual human bias and the bias of my traditional medium giving me organic and emotive flair already, and I add yet more conscious accents and stylistic decisions of composition and color, and in the end I should have a satisfying artistic concoction. I may not always be happy with what I make, but it's still artistic from all those lovely biases and stylistic choices that I utilize. Here the gouache adds a sort of vintage postcard or natural history vibe, especially when made more realistic via my drawing drawing style, use of a tonal grisaille, and my deliberate compositional decision in the end to omit the background and leave the branch unfinished in the gray grisaille color. It's a lovely old botanical and natural history journaling technique to not only paint white on white, but have part of a painting in full color and leave other parts just in a light color stain or a value lay-in like I did, or even just a pencil sketch. So when I finish up the bird eventually and stop there, it adds another organic and spontaneous element, like I could have been journaling this bird in the wild and then just left the branch and finished as it became too frosty, or the bird flew away, or I moved on to painting a snowshoe rabbit that hopped into view. The colored bird against the gray branch also makes the red bird pop even more, and I could exploit this further if I had painted a lot of gray branches all over and still only painted just the bird red. Then it would be like a sentence picked out in neon highlighter on a dense page of otherwise colorless text. And the gray also implies a snowy branch from a winter scene, even if it's a very light implication. because that that's usually where we imagine the cardinal during the holidays, so just a little gray branch pushes our minds there. Because I already filmed most of the bird, including the hardest part, which is the face, the last part I filmed was the red berries with blended white highlights. Took some time to finish him off later on, and then the splashy bird is all ready for the holiday season, and I hope you're inspired to paint a flock of crimson cardinals yourself. I hope you enjoy this demo of a gouache cardinal over a grisaille underpainting. If you want to do your own holiday ready bird, the notes, sketch, and reference for this demo along with my input will be available on Patreon. Thanks for parking your brushes here. Please like, subscribe, and check out my website links and Patreon page to support my art and art channel below. Until next time, wishing you all fantastical gouache adventures.